Hello, I'm Luca Torix, and welcome to part 39 of the Greek Cities campaign on Rome Total War. And, well, we are nearly at the end. Basically, we've got to mop up the final few settlements I want to take, and then defeat the Julia in the north of Italy, and then we can advance on Rome. So I think we can do probably nearly two of those things in today's episode. So what are we going to do? Well, we, I believe we can take Siwa this episode. So, Telis the Conqueror, can he take Siwa now? Yes, he can indeed. And if we have a look, it's lagging a bit there. I mean, it's it's pretty well in our favour. I might even auto-resolve that if I feel like it, because, I don't know, there's not a huge amount of point actually playing it if uh, it's a foregone conclusion we're going to win. What I really want to focus on is, like I said, the Julii. So, we need to take Mediolanium and Aretium. We need to retake Mediolanium. We did have it a little while ago. So, I think Doros the Mighty. Doros the Mighty, everyone, um, should really be heading towards Mediolanium. Now, he's going to have to attack Captain Augustus first, just to physically get him out of the way, so that we can head on to Mediolanium. He's going to back off, which is what I predicted. Okay, then we get stuck in that zone of control. Well, we'll have to attack you as well, then. Okay. Are you serious? Are you Are you serious? Right, we're going to have to attack him again, and now we can't back off any further. We're going to have to fight it. Well, screw it, I'll just auto-resolve it. It's so much in our favour. Clear victory, 82 kills to about 30-odd. This is a weird start to the episode, because I, all I wanted to do was get towards Mediolanium, and I've ended, ended up really far away from it. So what I want to do is, at the very least, put it under siege um, with the cavalry. So Doros, the mighty, put it under siege. That's good. Get a couple of rams going, and then the rest of your army can join you. Hopefully this turn, I really hope this turn they can join, because I want to build the rams and stuff in time. Yes, they can. Good. So we should be able to build the rams, both the rams, in one turn. Why not get three rams as well? So there we go. So Mediolanium, we should be able to take next turn. So I think... I think we're pretty much done. I mean, see what... I just feel like we can auto-resolve it. We're at the point of the campaign where... It really is just a matter of mopping up the odd glass settlement, and this is just so much in our favour. I'm willing to risk it. I mean, it's a... Uh, what's the strength ratio? It's 10 to 3. Okay, come on, Tellius. Don't let me down. Clear victory. 446 kills, 143. It just... You know, you've seen a lot of battles at this point in the campaign. There's no need to really see that one, which is so much in our favour. Exterminate the populace. And actually, Tellius, this is the end for you, I think. Um, I think that's your final job, was to take Siwa. So, thank you very much. You have conquered a lot of... Really, you were one of the main conquerors of Egypt. And you're 54 now. I think you could do with a bit of retirement. But, you know, conqueror of the sort of... The uh, southern Turkey region, the Middle East, and Egypt. He really, really was a pretty damn good general. The command is actually only four. But he's been a good... He's, you know, he's done a good job for me. He's actually got some very good traits as well. So, it's all right. I think maybe you can go and retire in Alexandria. I think that would be a nice place to retire. Or maybe Memphis, by the by the pyramids. Just sort of wander in that direction. Wherever you end up, you end up. Alright? But beautiful stuff. So, lovely big portion of the map is now ours. And we are moving towards Dumartha because I want to take that portion of the map as well. Now, over here, the Scythians, which you can barely see, but trust me, they're there. And the Scythians have got Porolissum under siege. Now, it's two turns until um, surrender. We've got plenty of force to actually deal with the Scythians, but I would rather them attack the city because I want to play it defensively, particularly against the Scythians. So, if we attack them, yeah, they don't back off. So what we'll do is, we'll wait for them to attack, hopefully do it at the end of this turn. If they don't, then we'll have to go out in the field and attack them, but I'd rather be in a nice defensive position with the Palisade and all that. But, you know, it doesn't really matter too much if we're not. Otherwise, I think we're pretty much sorted. I mean, we can't take Mediolanium now. We can take that next turn. We can defend um, Porolissum next turn. And then, once we've done that, we can start moving towards Aretium and then eventually the Senate. So, I think I'm going to do a bit of recruitment, a bit of construction, and then we'll go and deal with those pesky Julii in the north of Italy. Last thing I want to do is get the reinforcements, which were meant to be defending Thapsus last episode. Didn't actually ever get there, but Hermitimos, he can go inside Thapsus. If the Numidians ever send a force back, well, they're just going to all die. And then Carthage might be put under siege. I think we've got plenty of force to deal with it. Probably just recruit a militia hoplite or something terrible just to keep them going for the while. But I think we're pretty much okay. And also, get rid of this stupid Numidian navy. Get out of here. Get out of here, Numidia. All right? Yeah. And actually, get a ship over to Carolus. We might bring some of these men down just in case we need to defend Carthage. Right. I think we are ready. Let's end the turn. So, what's going on? Whoa, whoa, okay. 
Oh, oh, this is just... I mean, this is... I can see why you've got one influence here on Tunis, because you're an idiot. I didn't even know the Carthaginians were still around, okay? You can barely see them on the map. But they want a ceasefire, which I'm fine with. I have no, you know, I have no desire to take any more of their settlements. But they want 117,000 denarii, Carolus, Lilibium, Carthage, and Thapsus. In what universe am I going to accept that? I mean, seriously. In what universe am I going to accept that? No thanks, but no thanks, Carthage. Honestly, that is pathetic. Pathetic. Right, so the Julii were moving back into their settlements, and really, not a lot of people are attacking us now. Interestingly, though, the Scythians didn't, which I would have wanted them to, but unfortunately didn't. This guy has a lot of traits for a 21-year-old, so yeah, you can join the crew. Why not? We have now reached 400,000 denarii, so uh, the economy is looking pretty good indeed. So, if just noticed, by the way, Borders Harm has become... No, it's not rebel. It is um, indeed British. Yeah, interesting. Okay, right. So let's focus on what we need to do here. Now, first of all, we might really have to deal with the Scythians at Porolissum because if we end the turn, they're going to take the settlement, which would be a bit embarrassing at this point in the campaign. Any good mercenaries? Nothing amazing particularly. I mean, I quite like Illyrians. I mean, we've got money. We might as well just buy them. So I think we're going to attack the Scythians in a second. And then, of course, also we need to attack Mediolanium. Let's first of all actually get rid of the Scythians from Porolissum. Hopefully they don't come back. So we have, if we just click on him, we have Sipas of Ilium and Captain Tiro. Now, I don't even think this is an army of horse archers. No, it's not. It's no horse archers, which is rare for a Scythian army, and good, because I don't like facing horse archers, especially with phalanx. It's, you know, difficult to reach. So, three axemen, sorry, four axemen, one archer warband, and one warhound. I think we're perfectly well equipped to deal with this, probably with just this army of Sipas of Ilium alone. So, yeah, I'm perfectly happy to fight. Let's see how we do against the Scythians at Porolissum. I'm surprised they want to fight this, but... Hey, I'm not complaining. Right, so here we are in the snowy lands of, well, technically our territory. Used to belong to the Dacians, now the Scythians want it. Guess what? We're going to keep it. So, I'm not even going to bother with the reinforcements. I, I can fight this uh, without them, and it's just a waste of time waiting for them to march across the snowy plains of Greece. So, let's just have a nice sort of front line like this. I'm not going to bother having troops guarding the flanks because they haven't even got enough men to really properly flank us anyway. We'll just have a relatively wide line. That should be enough. We'll have the Bastani just here because I don't really see a use for them particularly in this battle. Um, Illyrians can also be behind the line just kind of like here. And then we'll have the archers uh, just... i tell you what, we'll have the Bastani there just protecting the archers like so. That works pretty well. And the general right at the back. I mean, that will be perfectly fine, I reckon, to deal with the Obsidians. So group the units, um, we'll get these guys off skirmish mode, and we'll start the battle. So, there they are, and we're going to have to march towards them, because, well, we're fighting them. I think this is the first time, is it? No, it's not the first time I've fought Scythia and Rome so, um, on YouTube, because um, I did it in the Mercenary campaign. But it's the first time since I've played as Scythia, um, and when I played as Scythia, my last campaign, I spammed horse archers like nobody's business. And these guys have failed to do so, and that is why they're going to lose. They might even be running off already, you know. I've got a feeling they might be, or no, they're just repositioning on the hill, which actually makes sense. But I'm also going to reposition on the hill, so screw you. Oh, they're coming towards us, you know. Let's pause it for a second. Jeez, I'm going a little bit fast there. Sorry, it's uh, my fault for having on such a high speed. Yeah, quickly get into position. They are charging us. No, no, stop, stop. There we go. Beautiful. Right. Sorry about that. A little bit too eager there um, to fast forward the time. In fact, we are on a little bit of a downslope. I'm just happy to walk further towards them because our infantry is better, but we're on a bit of a, uh, you know, a sort of a slope at the moment. It's not working in our favour. They are doing well to manoeuvre the high ground. I will give the AI that. They are really getting on the high ground, which is fine. We are gradually moving around, and sooner or later they'll be cornered, and they will, they will, you know, they'll just refuse to move any further. So it's fine. In fact, they might be running off properly, you know. Oh, are you serious, Scythia? Really? We killed 2% of you. <laughs> I mean, really, Scythia? Literally 11 of their men died. They're like, screw this. Cool. Flipping hell, they're too much. They've killed three more of us than they, we've killed of them. My goodness. I mean, talk about cowardice. 11 men die and they're like, you know, like, screw it. 
I'm out of here. Well, fair enough. I mean, I didn't particularly want to fight that anyway, so... Um, I'll see you in hell, basically. Hopefully you don't come back. If they do, we'll just have Sippus of Ilium uh, inside Prolus and he can spend his remaining days there. Beautiful. Right. So, that's dealt with. I mean, in a bit of an odd fashion. So I think really what we should do now is Doros the Mighty should go and take Mediolanium off the Julii. This will be a more interesting fight, that's for sure. So let's have a look at it here. I mean, it's still in our favour. Doris the Mighty, 1,228 men. Look at all those command stars. It's beautiful. Against Captain Aulus. Now, this army, it's a basic pre-marine army, really. Hastati, Town Watch are pretty garbage. Peasants are awful. We've got Welletez archers. You know, there's a couple of alright units, but nothing particularly amazing. And when you have Doris the Mighty as your general, the odds are never going to be in the opposition's favour. So, I'm more than happy to fight this. Let's go retake Mediolanium. How do we lose it? I think it was just a, a revolt, if I can remember correctly. Either way, let's go and take Mediolanium. And then we're going to move down and eventually fight this big old army of Her Herius Nobilior outside of Eretium. That will probably happen this episode as well. So, let's see what we can do here. Right, so here we are, and Mediolanium does not have very good walls um, at all. It only has like a basic wooden palisade, so neither me or the Julia I ever bothered to upgrade them, which is fine for me at the moment, because I'm attacking it. So, what have we got? We've got a bunch of units holding the um, the rams. Honestly, lads, that's fine. Just come forward a little bit. And then we have a ton of hot plights ready to storm the city. Now, Casualties doesn't matter too much if we take some casualties here because we can retrain them But I don't want to take too many because I am eager to advance forward on Eretium So, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do Anyway, let's start the battle move towards the gate and knock the walls down. Love it Okay, rams are at the gate now the ballistas were firing on us when we were walking forward What I've done is move the lads quite near to the wall and I don't believe the ballistas can actually fire over the wall at such a short range I don't think they are. I mean, they're not seeming to get any damage on us. But they were actually firing, like, fiery bolts. Unless that was the archers, which I don't think there are even any archers. So, yeah, it was the blisters. Um, sorry, why is there only one ram? Where are the other two? Guys, would you... I mean, yeah, only if you feel like it. You know, if it's too much of an effort for you, then don't bother. Your friends, they've already opened the door, okay? And you lazy bastards have done nothing. Come on. A little bit of urgency here, please. And because of that, now the, uh, what's that, Wellertez? You know, if it's Wellertez, just move in. Just move in. If it's Wellertez, we can go and hit them. In fact, bring a couple more units in. Because although I wanted to move all in at once from three angles, I'm not letting Wellertez just stand there and tear us to shreds, okay? These guys didn't do what they were told, did you? Naughty. Right, so anyway, Wellertez, they should suffer in the melee. Although they've already got a bit of damage on our men, but still, against a good proper phalanx, they shouldn't do that well indeed. The spears are down. They're going down really quickly now. Now, admittedly, Hastati are coming over. I think we've got enough force around here to deal with it anyway. In fact, that might be the archers that are firing. It, the, the frames, the FPS is going down a little bit. That always happens when someone uses fiery bolts. If you want to, like, lower the FPS to a ridiculously low level, just put fiery bolts on your arrows and um, yeah it'll just screw the game up doesn't matter how good of a gaming PC you have or whatever it will screw the game up okay trust me I've seen it a million times before so they're attacking again now admittedly this unit is a little bit in danger I'm actually gonna move them back because if they break it could actually sabotage the rest of the men and I'm also gonna have more men coming in you see this is why I wanted several breaches and um, but unfortunately these guys didn't do their job properly so we're having to squeeze through the front and it's not really working to our advantage. And the Romans are throwing all their force at us at a very concentrated place, which doesn't particularly work. I would have liked to have had several angles, because if we had an angle here, we could have hit them in the side or the back, and that would have screwed them over. Fortunately, we couldn't do that. Now, thank goodness Doros is nearby, because that morale is holding up. This unit needs to get out of there, okay? If they break, it could really, really mess everyone else up, alright? So please do that. And how, how are we actually doing so far? I feel like 6% to 6% here. We've taken a bit too many losses so far. Which, you know, it's okay. I mean, they are recoverable. We should have the facilities here to um, retrain all these lads. So it's not the end of the world, but it's just a little bit frustrating, actually, to, to see all these men lose. And I don't want to happen uh, what happened against the Thracians. If you remember that a long time ago, where we lost a battle in pretty similar circumstances because we only had one breach in the wall. 
don't want that to happen at all. These guys still haven't managed to sneak their way out, which is a little bit frustrating. Just get right out of there, lads. And then you, why don't you focus on these Weller Tests? Because if we can get the Weller Tests down, well, they're not going to be that difficult to get down, so that'll be good. I want you three to start moving this direction because the walls are about to go down in a second. Really want the troops coming into the side here because, look, imagine a charge into the back there. The Romans are going to be done for. They're really going to be done for. I think we are pushing them back, though, which is the good news. This ram is working very slowly. Come on, lads. There we go. We've got our unit to break. A unit of Wellertes breaks. Now the walls go down, which means that you can come in. I think... Yep, and we got their captain. I think that's their captain. Well, it's not going to be our general. Your yeah, enemy general fallen, so that'll be Captain Aulus that's dead. And they're starting to run back towards the plaza now, which is good. Yeah, okay, it took us a little bit of a while to sort of breach the walls, but we have managed to do so, which is good. And now, of course, that we've done it, now the breach is there. You know, just too little, too late, but whatever. Just come in anyway. Archers, you might as well just rock up. Don't fight, Will, though. That's just a waste of your ammunition. Same with you. Just sort of... Hang around. You guys start moving forward against these town watch and starty. They should be easy to break down. Right, more Julia are coming over, so I can't charge into the back. Oh no, they're, they're actually going for the main body of the force. Good. Right, guys, just start running over. That's it. How about you? Not you. Uh, where are the Guys, I told you to go through that gate. Oh, whatever. Just go for the blisters. Dudes, you need to hurry up and get right in the back of these Astarte there, because we need to sandwich them. These phalanx should be pointing their spears in this direction, alright? That's the point of a phalanx. You point the pointy end towards the bad people, and you go away, like I keep telling you. Right, so now we've trapped them. They, yeah, they are absolutely screwed now we've trapped them. They're all routing, and a lot of them are going to die in the process because they're running into spears, which is beautiful. Okay, how many of them we actually killed? We've killed only 30%. There's still quite a few more coming over, which is fine, albeit not 100% ideal, admittedly, but it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, they are coming around the corner, so let's just get all these phalanx to start coming over in this direction. Just deal with the hordes of Julii they keep sending at us, but I think we're doing okay otherwise. So Julii come in, Is that that's the war dogs in fact, which break almost immediately, they're going to just be ground down to nothing. And then we can also, so guys, all of you, just come and deal with these Sestati. I mean, I like it when they're aggressive like this because it means we don't have to fight them on the plaza. And if we fought them on the plaza, you know, they have infinite morale. As we saw last episode when we fought against the Numidians, having that advantage on the plaza really does mean a lot. So, you know, that's absolutely fine by me. And at this point, we're getting a lot more kills than they are, which is good as well. Although, it would be nice if you guys were a little bit quicker, like... And, I mean, a lot quicker. Come on. Oh, a lot of Peter in the side there as well. Come on, lads. Oh, look, get out of Phalanx for a minute. Just please, hurry up. You're so slow. It's the only thing I hate about Greek armies. They are painfully slow. When you need them to be fast, they are absolutely painfully slow. And it kills, literally kills. Because this unit is very, very exposed. It's very surrounded. And admittedly, still eager despite going down to 47 men, which is a credit to them. We've now got men coming in the side here. Those are starting a wavering, which is good to see. Yeah, okay, that charge really did mean a lot. And again, eventually, they do all collapse after being surrounded. There you go. Good stuff. Get out of here. Right, now, lads, just start... Well, basically, just chase them to the plaza. I mean, we're not going to be able to overtake them. But what we can do, start moving towards the plaza. I want Doris to come up. No, actually, yeah, just Doris for the morale support. And I also want the archers to come up here. So they can start firing on the men once they reach the plaza as well. Right, so we're advancing towards the plaza and the Julii seem obsessed with throwing units at us. Or, well, there they go, they rout, but throwing units towards their death. I mean, if they want to charge down these city streets, tight city streets with armoured hoplites, there's no way that we're going to lose that. I don't care if they're Roman. They're pre marion as well, remember. So, a unit has managed to make it this far without breaking. In fact, the, the leading unit has only got 43 men. That's probably not a great idea, but they just rout instantly. I mean, they don't stand a chance. We probably don't even need the archers. I mean, what have we got? We've got peasants, war dogs, and Hastati. I mean, really not a lot left. It is the, the dregs, the last just few units of the Roman army. What I'll do is I'll get the archers to start coming in this direction, and then what you can do is start firing, and that will draw units into the phalanx which will work perfectly. Doros just sort of come up here for morale support as well. 
Right, that's it, lads. So Hoplites just charge into these war dogs and whatever units they're throwing at us. How many of us have died? 21%. I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, it should be pretty easily recoverable. And I actually have been recruiting a lot in areas like Batavium and um, Ariminum and places and Segesta, places like that. So that once this army, if it is a little bit depleted, needs to go south to face the Julian Senate, they can pick up some reinforcements on the way. So it should be, should be all right. Okay, so we're just grinding the Julii down a bit more. It really is the last few men. In fact, these are the only quality troops they have left. This is pretty much garbage. So it's once we break these lads down, I'm pretty sure we've got it. In fact, the peasants and the war dogs are just going to charge anyway. Straight into the phalanx. They don't stand a chance. I hope not anyway. Um, that would be embarrassing after all this. I mean, they're, they're doing a decent job. And as I said, infinite morale on the plaza. They're going to be doing an all right job. But I think we, well, we do have the advantage. Um, that's for sure. We have a plenty of reinforcements coming up as well. So just as long as you keep your spears down, lads. As long as you keep your spears down. All right. This probably isn't the most efficient way of doing it. I am fully aware of that. Let's get Doris on the side, maybe, just so he can get these some of these peasants down. Um, but in general, yeah, we look okay. A couple of units break because they actually stepped off the plaza for a second. Uh, Doros, how about you sound your horn? Just keep the lads going. That's it. And then just charge in the side, or the back rather. And they should go down super quickly now. There's no way Doris is going to die here. I doubt he'll die to peasants. That would be a very anticlimactic way for him to go. Um, but he seems to be doing a pretty good job just grinding his way through. Yep. Doris just swept through the Julii there. Absolute madman. But he does the job well. He does the job very, very well. I think we can properly speed this up now. There you go, victory. So, yeah, we'll end the battle. And clear victory, 859 kills to 333. You know what, that's actually not too bad. We were facing nearly 900 Julii, you know, fairly late on in the game. I'll take that, I'll take that. It could have been better, could have been worse, but the, the fact of the matter is we have retaken Mediolanium and now it is the final push south um, into Rome. So this is really the exciting part now. And of course we still have to fight, face that big army, so that'll be interesting. Let's exterminate them. Um, you are moving very slowly towards this direction. I want you to sort of just come over to Mediolanium when you can and reinforce it. So, what have we got? Let's have a look. So, we'll lower the tax rate. We'll obviously repair the walls and get yourself a temple as well. Now, we need to retrain some of these lads. In fact, it's not really that many men to retrain. I am going to retrain them because... Oh, I can't retrain the armor top plates here. Ah, uh, yeah, I can't I can't train armor top plates here. In which case, can we do it as a Gesta? Yes, we can as a guester. In which case, move straight out of Mediolanium. So all of you guys... Do we want all of them to move out? I mean, it's only for a turn. And they'll be alright. Okay, we'll leave... We'll leave just one unit of normal hoplites in Mediolanium, just so they don't revolt or lose the settlement. There we go. So Doris the Mighty, head down to Segesta. You can get retrained uh, there. Hopefully, I don't think he can reach you. Can Harius reach you? No, he can't. So that's fine. And you're heading into Mediolanium as well. We'll get retrained at Segesta next turn, and then we'll be plenty ready enough um, to go and fight Harius and Abilius, which will probably be what will, will be the end of the episode. So, um... We'll, we'll fight that, and that's the big battle, and bear in mind, Gaius Maxentius is there. Now, to draw Gaius Maxentius away, we could besiege Rome with Kirkion of Lacedon, who, this young lad, well, he's actually 27 now, he's been waiting for this opportunity with his massive army. So what we could do is attack Herius Nobilius, and then besiege Rome. Gaius Maxentius will come down to deal with that, and then Doris the Mighty can go and take the Julia settlement, maybe. We'll have to have a think about that. But he can't get to Retium now anyway, so that's kind of irrelevant. I think we're pretty much ready to end the turn. I'll do a bit of recruitment, a bit of construction, and we'll be ready to go. Also, I want to get these geezers from Carolus down to Carthage, just because they're more use there. If we brought... How about all of you onto the ship? Carolus, they won't mind that, will they? They love it. They're all right. So we'll move over there. And then you lads, get inside Carthage. Oh, we've got too many men. Well, that's never a problem on Rome Total War anyway. So how about we move all these stupid peasants out? Put the good quality units in. And yeah, you know what? That's totally cool. You geezers can go to Lily Byron because they're unhappy. Lovely. Good stuff. And the map is looking very white and red now. I mean, it really is... Greek dominance in the area and you know well that's a lot of hard work has been uh, has you know led to this empire but it, it's worked out pretty well so let's end the turn 
and will move ever closer towards the big battles against Herius Nobilior and Gaius Maxentius. Okay, end turn. Oh yes, Tellius the Conqueror. He's going to retirement in Memphis by the pyramids. That's a nice place to retire, I reckon. Probably. I don't know much about Memphis, to be honest. So, yeah, you, you can just sort of chill out there. What else is going on? We're moving closer to Demarth. That's the only other settlement I want to take. Romans are moving around, but nothing too threatening. Those Romans don't move around. Dacians are moving up north. Scythians are just wandering around. There's another candidate for adoption, Duke Colossus of Corinth. I'm never even going to see any of these guys. Look how many guys are in Syracuse. I just don't even need them. <laughs> I've just got too many generals at this point. Because really, we're not at war with many people now. Scythia is the proper war. Dacia, I've kind of just can't be bothered to defeat them. Parthia is basically defeated, in this region anyway, so that's not really a proper war. The only big war left is really with the Romans. We've defeated all our other big enemies, so that's fine. Any cool mercenaries? You know what? I don't need them, so <laughs> let's just uh, probably go and put Dumartha under siege. So yeah, we are going towards Parthia, but uh, yeah, there's not really a lot you can do about that. Parthia, you're pretty screwed. So all this is pretty irrelevant. And I think it's just a matter of moving towards the Julii. So Doris the Mighty, step into Segesta. Ah, right. Um, okay, that's fine. You guys step out for a second. And of course we have Fiden of Salinas at Segesta as well. Probably not needed, although he might come along as sort of like a lieutenant um, to Doris the Mighty. Because we could do with some more cavalry, in fact. So he might do that. But either way, we need to retrain some of the lads. That's it. Retrain all of you. I want to get another unit of armoured hoplites in. We don't even need that unit of armoured hoplites, to be honest, but, you know, just keep them anyway. We have this army outside of Segesta as well, so we have a ton of troops in this region. We have the big army of Kirk and of Lacedon. Now, do we besiege Rome? That is a possibility that Kirk and of Lacedon besieges Rome now to move Gaius Maxentius down because I don't want to face these two with one army. We've got two really strong armies, one in Capua, one in Segesta. They might as well fight the Senate and the Julii respectively, rather than one army versus two. That kind of makes sense. So, I think Kirkin of Laston bring all these men out, apart from these three, which aren't that amazing. I would have preferred more archers, but you can't get everything in life, unless there are Cretans here. Nope, sadly not. Uh, that settlement, what is it, Capua, is a bit unhappy. So, just get yourself another mercenary. And can we lower... No, we can't lower the tax rate. Well, guys, screw that. Guys, you're going to have to deal with it. Just get yourself some sewers. You're, you're going to have to be happy about it, alright? It's just for one turn. So, Kirkian of Laston, put Rome under siege. Yes, we are officially putting Rome under siege. Which is a big old move, but there we go. I don't think Kirkian of Laston is going to take Rome. I'd actually prefer it if Doris the Mighty took Rome. You know, for storytelling purposes, it would probably suit uh, better. But, you know, whatever. Kirkian of Laston, maybe he can be the unlikely hero of the campaign. Who knows? So, again, I think that's pretty much all we can do. I'm recruiting archers in Araminum because I feel like that's the thing we need and we probably need some cavalry as well so just get some Greek cavalry and some archers like that otherwise I'm perfectly happy to just end the turn and then move ever closer towards the Julian Senate. I'll be very interested to see if Gaius Maxentius moves down. I hope he does. So turn has ended and ah interesting. Um, okay now this is <laughs> this is interesting because basically Gaius Maxentius didn't move an inch. We could potentially take Rome now. Which is not what I expected. Because basically if we defeat this army. Kill all the generals. These two armies will disappear. And then there will be no one in Rome. We can just waltz in. So Kirkin of Laston might take Rome right now. In unexpected circumstances. You know I envisioned at the end of the campaign. To be a big glorious battle for the Eternal City. Well. Maybe that's not the case, but in a way, maybe this is more fitting if we take Rome in a nice defensive battle on the field with our spears up. Do you know what I mean? Like, that actually might be more fitting because we haven't played it very attacking this campaign. We've been very defensive. If we won or defeated Rome in a defensive battle, well, that would kind of make sense. So, you know what? Maybe, maybe that's what it's... Maybe that's the game telling me that... This is sort of the metaphor for this campaign. I'm, I'm saying all this, and we haven't even won the battle yet. We might not even win the battle, so I should probably be a little bit less cocky. Now, Kirkin of Laston, young lad from Syracuse, I believe has never fought a battle before, but he's actually got four command stars, so he's not too bad. 
against Marcellus Maxentius, who is a family member. And some pretty decent troops. Triari are okay. Prink compares to a step up from Hastati. You know, some alright lads. Onagers are pretty uh, alright as well sometimes. And then we have Kalas of Enna, who is a general, and again, a fairly similar army with some basically Numidian copycat units. So, I think we stand a very good chance. I would personally like to have more cavalry and missiles, but I feel like the, the amount of really strong, good heavy infantry we've got should compensate for that. Let's see if we could potentially take Rome this battle. It doesn't matter if we don't. We're still in a very, very good position, but there's a possibility we could take Rome right now. Let's see how it goes. Right, so here we are, the big old walls of Rome in the distance, and well, we're going to set up how we've set up a lot in this campaign, which is basically, let me do some counting for a second. Okay, I want 11 men to be, or 11 units to be the front line, nice sort of wide front line like that would be good, and then we'll have two units of hoplites on each flank, because those Romans, they do like to flank, alright? Like so, okay good, and then we're going to have the archers protected by all them, as I said it's a shame we didn't have more archers, but you know what, I still think we have a pretty good chance here. That's going to be our formation, just come forward a little bit, so we'll get these guys into a group. Now the other army, because one army is coming from Rome, the other army, is it coming from a similar direction? I think it is, I think it is, I'm fine to set up here at the moment, probably set up more like... I don't know, that, and then we can adjust the, we can adjust it, excuse me, there we go, and then we can adjust it accordingly to see wherever, you know, it's fine, so start the battle, the right, so one army is over me. there, the other army is, well, coming from Rome, believe it or not, okay, well, we'll just turn to face the, uh, the first army, that's just polite, I think, they're pretty much all coming from the same direction, ooh, the onagers have done a bit of damage, damn onagers, there's not a lot I can do about that, as I said, they can be decent sometimes. Now, they've got them on the flamey mode, so it's very, very inaccurate. But when they do hit, they do a lot of damage. I mean, that is a lot of crispy Greeks. But, you know, he could potentially kill Kirkin of Laston here um, if he got a lucky hit. That was really close as well. So, I mean, he's, I could risk Kirkin of Laston and try and get around the back of those onagers. If they... Ooh, what a hit that was! Jeez, the pan yeah. Okay, I'm going to risk Kirkin of Laston. They're doing too much damage, those onagers. And to be honest, we've got plenty of generals. You saw, you know, a couple of minutes ago, we literally have like six generals in Syracuse, okay? This geezer is easily replaceable. My, well, Kirkion's job is to risk his life on his first battle to go and kill those damn onagers because they are doing a huge amount of damage to certain aspects of my front line, and I can't allow that. I cannot allow that whatsoever. So he's coming over. Thankfully, their general has not reacted in the slight okay I spoke too soon. He has reacted very, very quickly, in fact. So we need to run over, hopefully just get a good charge into those onagers so that they break, and then run away before all these guys get to us. That's the plan. Um, are we able to... That was a terrible charge, because that's not a good charge. Okay, get out there for a second. Get out there for a second. Don't need to die, Kirkjorn. Just come around here. I don't even know what's going on at the front line. But um, at the moment, we're playing cat and mouse, which is a lot more fun. Although, you should really be running, lads. Right, just pause for a second. Don't you dare charge into them. What happened to the Onagers? Are there any left? Onagers. 22 men left. Right. Just run back for a second. No, don't charge into them. You see, that's not what I told you to get, Kirkjorn. Kirkjorn, are you... Do you your general shames himself. He runs. Is that me? I told him to run that direction. He charges and then continues to charge when I was telling him to run that direction. Well, Kirkin of Laston was absolutely awful. And you know what? It's going to lower the morale of our men if he doesn't recover. So, admittedly, their front line is pretty much collapsing already, which is good. Um, archers, yeah, okay, their front line has collapsed. I didn't even see their front line collapse, but it did. Right, Kirk, you're on right, stop for a second, he's recovered. Forget about the stupid onagers, they're just going to have to kill our front line. Okay, just... Dude, are you alright? Why are you... You're like obsessed with trying to charge into that general. And now their units have recovered. Oh my god, Kirk, you're destined for death, I'm afraid, man. I think we might need to get another general from Syracuse. Because, uh, yeah... 
Kirkyon has done a very bad job at the beginning of this battle. Now, hopefully, we can kill their general. If we can kill their general, then, well, we stand a good chance of taking Rome itself, because the army might disintegrate, you never know. But, he might rout before he actually dies. He's already wavering, and we can't trap him with the cavalry, because we don't have any cavalry. And there you go, he breaks. Yep, so I think this is not the battle where we take Rome, because they still have generals and all that. And those damn onagers are really quite annoying. But anyway, they're going to come forward. I'm very confident we can win the battle. What I'm not confident on is actually taking Rome itself because, well, they're going to have some cowardly men that get back to the city. I can I can tell. What have we got here? We've got some Wellites that are just shaken. Again, I, I mean, I really did waste Laston's bodyguard or Kirkin of Laston's bodyguard. I mean, God, the onagers are doing so much damage. You idiots. Why couldn't you be better? Why can't you be like Doros, huh? Or Aminicles of Philippi. Or Tellius the Conqueror. Why can't he be like one of them? Useless. Absolutely useless. You can tell this is your first battle. But even Doros. Doros was never this bad. I don't think. I think his first battle was to take Cadonia. I, I, I don't know. I think it might have been. But who knows. That's quite, It was quite a while ago now. Anyway, I'm going to speed it up because the Romans are just messing around. Okay, they're coming over. The vast, vast majority of their kills have been through the Onagers, which have really wrecked havoc. I mean, they've only killed 11% of our men. It would be nice to get one of the generals down at the very least, but, you know, whatever. You can't get everything in life. They're going to charge. They're going to break. And they're going to retreat back to Rome, where I think they'll be managed, they'll manage to hold on to it. You never know. So they're going to charge in now. There's the general. He's going down pretty quickly. The Orangers might even get some friendly fire on their own men. Our archers... Oh, oh we killed one general. We did manage to kill one general. Beautiful. What was his name? Callas of Enna. So Callas of Enna is dead. These guys are all going to go back to the city. I can't run them down because I haven't got any cavalry to run them down with. So, you know, the cavalry auxiliary, they're going to be annoying. But they'll just run out of missiles at some point and then become useless. So we are definitely going to have to um, actually have a big battle for Rome. Which I'd prefer Doros to do, to be honest. Just because it'd be more fitting if he did it. Um, but it's alright. He'll be in a very good position to do so, I hope. Although saying that, he still has to fight Herius Nobilior and Gaius Maxentius in the same battle. So Doris the Mighty, he's still got a lot of work uh, that needs to be done, and not easy work either. Also, those Onagers nearly killed their own men. Well done. Right, the Romans are eventually coming forward after basically spending ages pelting us with flaming boulders, and they've killed 14% of our men. I would guess probably 10 of that 14% was purely from the Onagers. They really did do a good job. Now, how many have we killed of them? We've killed... 50%, okay, that's fair enough. So these guys, I think this is like the remnants of the first army, which actually routed, backed off, and have now recovered, because that general recovered, and they're now going to die, and talking of dying, their general died, so we actually did manage to kill both generals. Marcellus Maxentius is indeed dead, and pretty much the whole of their army is. I mean, there's a few men left, but um, yeah, we can't chase them, because our, our phalanx is slower. So, you know, that's all right. That's a lot of cowardly Romans that are making their way back to the Eternal City. It's the Eternal City because it's eternally cowardly, okay? Yeah, that's right. Right, we've got a clump of the Senate that are just sort of standing there. They don't feel like actually um, getting involved, which is a little bit annoying. So, Kirkion's men move forward. I mean, it's not a terrible first battle for Kirkion, just his individual performance was not good at all in any way. Also, I think there is still a general left, maybe. Unless that's his bodyguard. Right, they're moving about. I mean, look, look, men, just go forward. Just go forward and start taking them down, okay? They're absolutely all garbage units with low morale. They're not going to do much left. In fact, they're the onagers. Get them down, definitely. Take revenge, all right? Those are the men that were firing flaming boulders at you, all right? So, yeah, definitely get them down. Um, the cavalry auxilia charged into one of my units of phalanx. I love this in Rome Total War, where you can just see a colour of purple where the enemy died. You can see exactly where they charged in. You can also see exactly where our men were turned into crispy bacon, but you know, there's a lot more purple, all right? Also, stop for a second, someone's going for my archers. Ah, oh, not ideal. Really? Really? That you're, you're going for the innocent people, all right? You're going for the defenseless, you coward. All right, we've got a whole army over there, why don't you go and fight them? Yeah, you coward. The archers actually should have, should have come forward, but they didn't bother to, so actually it's kind of their own fault. You, go and kill that general's bodyguard, alright? I think it's pretty much like the only unit left as well. Hopefully he just charges in. No, he doesn't. 
for goodness sake, he's going to charge into the back of a phalanx instead, aren't you? you? Yeah, of course you are. Oh, screw you, screw you. Okay, well, he, he, he routed anyway, despite charging into the back of a phalanx. So, yeah, I think this battle is pretty much over. Lovely stuff. In fact, you know what? I'm going to end it now. So, there we go. Really quits? Yes, indeed. So, Kirkin of Laston's first battle is a victory. 685 kills to about, you know, 350, 400 odd. You know, it could have been better, could have been worse. I don't think we've done enough to take Rome, but it doesn't matter if we haven't. Because we still have Doris the Mighty on our side, okay? He can do that himself. And no, we indeed did not take Rome, which is absolutely fine. Like I said, Dacian's moving towards Campus Lazarjed. The Julii put Mediolanium under siege. We've got plenty of men in Patavium to deal with that. Numidians have attacked Lepkis Magna. We can go and deal with that in a minute as well. You're 39 years old, so no thank you. Okay, so, first of all, what exactly is in Rome? Basically nothing. I mean, we could, we literally could take it now. I'm not going to, but we literally could take it now. But I'm not going to, and that's not just for storytelling purposes. I want Gaius Maxentius to move down south. And, ah, oh, the thing is, right, if we get this army here, so we'll bring all you guys, apart from the barbarian mercenaries, move out. How many men have we got left? We've got space for three. So bring three armoured hoplites along. And then also, if we've got a few more armoured hoplites... Well, they might as well head up towards Mediolanium to go and defend that, actually, might they? So what we do, we have some lads in Patavium. Why don't we bring you three, plus you two, along to Mediolanium. Just sort of stand here for the moment. And then, these men, or these two men, go on your way to join them. That's it. You get inside to guess that. Beautiful. Right, Doris the Mighty. Now, if he attacked Herius and Abilius now, would he be fighting three men? Or three armies. Possibly. Which would not be easy. Even if you've got a good army like this. That wouldn't be easy. I think. Well look. Here's the thing. If we have to fight three armies. I would rather do it in a big defensive battle. So I'm going to put Aretium under siege. Like so. And then we're going to probably be attacked by three armies. At least two. Herius Nobilius and the men inside Aretium. So next episode, there will be a huge battle for Eretium, probably one of the biggest of the whole series. I'm hoping Gaius Maxentius doesn't get involved and instead goes down to Rome where he can deal with, or try and deal with, Kirkin of Laston. That's what I'm hoping for, but there we go. And I'm actually going to end the episode there, not quite actually, I need to deal with Lepkis Magna first. I have actually forgotten about Lepkis Magna because there's not a lot of men there, is there? No. These Numidian armies just come out of nowhere, literally, they come out like the desert. Gizgo the Cunning. Very cunning indeed. So actually, you you men that have come from Lepkis Magna to defend Thapsus, you are now going back to Lepkis Magna to defend that, yes, because I did not plan it very well. So all of you get on a boat and just start heading down in this direction. Did I see mercenaries or was I dreaming? No, I wasn't dreaming. Yeah, we'll pick up some Libyans, why not? I think we have enough money. So yeah, you guys start heading towards Lepkis Magna next turn. That's lovely. All right. Yeah, I do believe that is gonna be the end of the episode. You just get yourself a temple or baths or something. I don't know, that's fine. Right, so I think next episode will be the grand finale. We're gonna fight a huge battle outside of Retium and then storm on Rome, and that that's it. I think it's like the final two battles, basically, to fight. So, let, let's see how that goes. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the grand finale very, very soon. See you around.